my friends. It is me, Karen Valentine. And I thought for um, today, since I was going to do it for myself anyway, I thought I would go ahead and film it while I was doing it. So I recently purchased this set of Mungo Gallery Artist Soft Oil Pastels. And I have been in the market um, for a product like this um, for a while now because I really, <laughs> really wanted to start doing some more work back on my um, beloved uh, Nina Desert Storm paper. And the problem that I personally lately have been having with it is that... Um, well, let me back up for just a second. So I was looking at my packaging for the paper and saw that it is indeed um, acid-free, which is really, really important when you're doing um, artwork that you want to um, either sell or that you want to last a, a long time. Um, so I was very excited to, to see that. Um, so the second issue that I was having with the paper is that I wanted to find a product that I could do backgrounds on, um, sorry, backgrounds with, um, that did not involve covering the entire background with um, layers and layers and layers of colored pencil because that just takes way too long and and was not going to give me the look that I wanted. So I did some some research on the different um, oil, soft oil pastels, and I didn't want to spend a ton of money because I didn't even know if I was going to like using them yet or not. And um, I had um, on a whim purchased a couple from my local art supply store of um, Oh, yeah, and of course, I can't think of the name of it. It's one of the, like, really high-end cream of the crop um, oil pastels that cost, like, $4 a, a pastel or something. And I found those to be um, way too soft. And also, um, not only way too soft, but just, like, gooey. Like, they were always gooey. Um, so that was not going to work for me. But I had I had read and watched videos um, on some of these other brands that sounded very intriguing to me. So I was debating between um, this brand, the Mungo Gallery, and the Paul uh, Rubens. And it kind of came down to six of one, half a dozen of the other. There were good things about each, and I just finally said, okay, I'm just going to pick one. Um, and I picked this one because of the um, amount of blues and greens that it had in it. And that was what um, attracted me to this set. So I tested them out already um, on this paper. What, what I used to use for backgrounds, boy, I'm going around this a, for a long way. What I used to use on this paper, um, you guys know I love my... Um, the, the gel the gel crayons the gelatos um, but the problem with gelatos even though I still love them is that they're very translucent and um, when working on this tan paper I didn't want translucence I wanted something very opaque well look how nice and opaque these oil pastels are and so this was done yesterday and even though Yes, you do get a teeny bit of color transfer. Um, I really have to rub in order to get um, the color to come off onto my finger. Um, I will be testing to see um, how uh, a fixative works and if that kind of cures that problem. But in truth, um, I plan on these um, getting mounted and framed, and so the fact that the pastel doesn't dry completely does not bother me. So, five minutes now into the video, and I'm gonna finally get to the purpose of this of this video, and that is that I'm going to go ahead and swatch these out. Um, I needed to do it, as I said, and um, 
I'm one of those freaky people who loves to swatch their um, art supplies. <laughs> so um, I decided to go ahead and do it on the tan paper because that is um, why I purchased them in the first place. So there you go. And I went ahead and I, um, for the um, expediency of time, I went ahead and already wrote down the names. I didn't worry about the numbers because these are not available in open stock. So for me, I didn't really need um, to write down the numbers. This is the 48 set. Um, they come all the way up to like 120. So, um, you know, if I fall in love with them. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't need 120 oil pastels, but I did need. I did need these, um, and I actually, in addition to those, I actually bought. Um, Paul Rubens sells a pack of um, six uh, white, and um, I'm sure that white is going to be used a lot by me. Um, I do like to do a, um, a glow around things and so the whites I think will really get used quite a lot so there you go all right so I have a whole bunch of um, q-tips here that I will be using to do the blending I think one of the things that it may get a little bit hard to get used to um, but we'll see is the fact that because they are oil um, this is not a clean a water cleanup so um, if I use, if I were to use a brush, I think that, um, I would have to clean that brush and I would not be able to clean it with water. I'd have to clean it with mineral spirits. So, um, Q-tips I think are going to be the key. So there you go. So there's lemon yellow. This is pale yellow. Um, I really like how they really are very creamy. And um, as you saw on the little the little test that I did on my little um, chipmunk guy, um, they blend real nicely. So, so far, I'm a fan of these big time. And I think that these yellows probably are not going to be super pretty against this tan um, paper, but I do think that they'll um, blend in with other colors very nicely. So this is just yellow. Um, I know a lot of, um, there are a lot of artists out there that use these to actually create um, their paintings with. I think that would take a lot of practice on my part because I'm kind of more of a detail-oriented kind of girl and most of the art that I've seen created with these is um, is uh, what's the word there's a word for that kind of art um, impressionistic look how opaque and yummy that yellow is I am so excited about these because I really missed, I missed doing artwork on my, on that paper, this paper. I missed doing artwork on this paper. And um, so far I've just used the same side of the, of the Q-tip. I think once we get a little bit further into a different color, I'll have to switch, but it works very nicely for getting in there. I think it's just doing pretty good. Okay, this is golden yellow. Oh, it's just, the colors are just so pretty and rich and opaque. I'm really excited about these. Um, yeah, pretty excited. So I would imagine if you wanted to use these, but you weren't going to um, 
frame your artwork if you were going to um, make, like say for example, if you were gonna do a coloring page or something with them. Um, you could probably just put, this is just orange, you could probably just put a piece of um, wax paper between your pages of your book and um, and that would protect any of the color from transferring onto the page in front of it. Oh, and they just, I mean, they just blend without any, without any heat or any, that's just really, really nice. Okay, salmon. Um, I had tried using my um, Neocolor 2s as a, you know, to do backgrounds with. And they were just too, um, I mean, they worked okay with, with heat. And I'm gonna say, okay, they worked okay with heat, but they didn't blend like these are blending. Now this one I would say is a little bit more sheer um, than some of the other ones. But still pretty nice. All right, salmon pink. Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to use these. We're going to do um, a dog on the next video. In fact, it's the same dog that I used to do the video for the how to transfer your images onto your paper. And, um, boy, that Q-tip is <laughs> falling apart. Um, you can use your fingers, too. Although I'm wondering, like, uh, I'm kind of curious about when you get, if you get this on your fingers, I wonder, I guess you'd have to use mineral spirits. This is flame red kind of looks like bright orange to me, but that's, all right, let's use a different Q-tip. Flame red. That's so orange, it's just, it, it kind of cracks me up that red is even in the name of that one, but okay. All right, this one is a vermilion. So this set that I bought, um, just over 20 bucks, not very expensive at all. And I got the one that was like $2 extra. And it came with, it came with these um, pastel holders. So, yeah, pretty cool. They hold pretty well. So when you get down to, you know, small bits, I think those will probably come in handy. Though it does feel really good to have that extension and be able to use them like a pencil. Pretty cool. I like those. Okay, vermilion we just did, right? Yes. So now, oh, have I been out of frame? Jeez Louise. All right. Sorry about that, you guys. Jeez Louise. All right, so I'm going to keep my paper straight. <laughs> I feel I feel like a newbie again. Like, oh, like when I first started doing videos and I would always go out of frame. Just, oh my God, it's so nice and opaque. You could not come even close to the opacity using gelatos. I mean, this is like, um, you know, full on thick colored pencil kind of color. This is really, that's really nice. All right, Carmine. I hate it when I go out of, <laughs> I 
hate it when I go out of the lines. Yes, I was one of those kids that never liked to draw outside of the lines of their coloring book. What can I say? I'm doing it again. Really, it's unnecessary to get that close to the edge because the pigment comes out so nice and rich that you can just blend it right up to the edge. Oh my goodness. I'm feeling kind of giddy, you guys. These are, these are really, really nice. So my next um, test on these will be the a light fast test. This is pink. Um, I, I did find a, um, a website. I cannot think of her name at the moment. Um, but she did her own light fest test on these. And she had really, um, really nice results. Um, she was very happy with the results. <clears throat> so, um, that is good news. Um, because I can't really use these for customers until I, um, until I do a light fast test myself. And being here in Arizona, where we have some of the uh, most intense sun, um, it should be a pretty good test. Oh, it's pretty. All right, this is lilac. Yes. Oh, I just love purples. All right, let's try that. I think I got a little contamination maybe from the previous color because I didn't change it. And not quite as good coverage and that's only because I didn't put down as much of the pastel onto the page. Okay, this is violet. I just can't get over how nice and easy it is for them to just blend out. So after I blended that all in, really not not too bad at all as far as what comes off. I'm I'm really happy, really really pleased with this. Okay, periwinkle blue. I wish I had done this in a, I almost feel like this would have been a good thing to do for a live. <laughs> that way, you guys could carry on the conversation. <laughs> oh, I just, holy moly, I just can't get over how opaque they are. Oh my goodness. Okay, wait, I think I got out of order here. No, I didn't. We're good. Okay, mauve. Oh, by the way, um, I did, before I turned on the video, I did change the order of just a few of them. I think there were like four um, that I felt like I did not like the order that they had put them in. 
um, and that's just me. But the set of 48, they're all numbered, and they're all numbered in in chronological order, so... Um, yeah, I don't know how they managed to do that when they have uh, chronological? Numerical, not chronological order, numerical order. They're all in numerical order. Um, except for me now, because I took some and moved them around. But, you know, they had like a couple of the greens in a weird spot, and I wanted all the greens together, and they had, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know if you guys do that, but I need to have my colors, similar colors all together next to each other. Sky blue. Does anybody else get giddy when they start seeing all the colors laid out together? I don't know. I know it's just, it's a weird thing. I think only artists understand the excitement of seeing the color. Ultramarine blue. So it's definitely, I think these definitely for me would be background only kind of things because I just don't have the precision that I would want. But you can get I think you can get into a pretty tight area. I think if you were to put some of this on a piece of paper um, and then pull it off with the Q-tip, you could apply it in um, little skinny areas and it would probably go on just fine. Yes, I'm excited. Okay, Prussian blue. Sapphire blue. So it is my understanding that these don't ever, you know, fully cure, like say the gelatos, um, you know, would, or any water-based thing would. I think they always kind of stay um, moist, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure what word would be the right word to use, but I don't think they dry like oil paint dries. Um, but they really don't transfer a lot. But when I um, finish, oh, I'm, I'm I hate it when I grab the lines. <laughs> when I um, finish here. I am going to spray them and try and um, see what happens if I can get that to seal a little bit better. All right, I'm going to try an experiment. It may be a complete fail. 
<laughs> it may be a complete fail, but I want to see what happens if I try and erase. It certainly took some of it off. I don't know that I would call it actually erasing. Although, well, it kind of did erase. Um, well, I suppose in an emergency, you could probably do that. Okay. What did I do here? Cobalt blue, I'm getting <laughs> sapphire blue, cobalt blue. What did I do? Ultramarine, why did I pull this out? Oh, sky blue, because I have no idea why. Cobalt, <laughs> ah, cobalt blue, okay, light blue next. Jeez Louise, all right. Um, I'm debating on changing, I guess that's, that's not too, too bad, that works. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, turquoise blue. So you can see how pretty they are. <laughs> Turquoise blue. I mean, it'd be kind of cool if they came, um, you know, sharpened to a to a cone kind of shape on the end. Um, I think the ones that I tried. Why can't I think of the name of those? I cannot think of the name of it. They're a fancy high-end pesto. Anyway, I um, think those came kind of sh sharpened, more cone-shaped on the end. But I... <laughs> If I have good results with these being fairly light fast, why would I ever want to spend big money on on uh, high end pastels, oil pastels? Um, generally, budget supplies are not you know, as light fast as you would want them to be. Um, but the Paul Rubens, which are also a budget, they were about the same price as these. The Paul Rubens all have light fast ratings on them and the ratings were pretty good. So I'm not sure if Paul Rubin is another name for the same you know, you, you hear, I read somewhere that, um, you know, this Mungo brand is manufacturers for lots of different budget oil pastel brands. That one's not as opaque, that lime green, but it'll, it would mix really nicely with other colors. Um, kind of like those, those color pencils. I'm getting old, people. I can't think of the names of things anymore. <laughs> but there's like color pencils that are uh, made in Korea. And they it's the same pencil marketed under a gazillion different names. So part of me kind of wonders, like, hmm, I wonder if, you know, these are the same. Okay, this is yellow green. Oh, that's pretty. I like my yellow greens.
the colors are different from the from from Paul Rubin though so probably don't have such luck so I will have to do my own light fast test I guess the thing is you can't really do a light fast test for you know 10 20 30 years but you can do one for a month or two months especially if it's stuck in a really bright window and uh, if you see fading after a month or two that's probably a pretty good indication that you shouldn't use it for I'll call it fine art I guess So I had a lot of the, um, I could tell that there was a lot on there. So it does rub off if you have enough pigment down. But now that I've rubbed it off, I wonder, I thought it erases pretty good. Enough to satisfy my, uh, crazy, obsessive trait. Okay, so that was grass green, and this is now emerald green. dark green they so far every one of them has felt as smooth and creamy as the others and there's just been a couple that don't feel as opaque Malachite green. See, that's one I wished I would have stuck like up in here somewhere because it's to me it's more blue. That's okay. Um, I can tell already that I've contaminated this and probably added more green to this than it actually has. But I guess it's close enough. Okay, olive yellow. I can see a little bit of um, color. What do you call that? Where the colors not was not blended um, really really well into the formula before they poured it into, but it blended out completely and beautifully. So I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, there's page one. <laughs> page two is only a half page, so we might get out of here in under an hour. <laughs> All right, next one is light olive. Oh, that's pretty. screen
These are seriously making me want to go buy more colors. <sighs> I wonder if you can get sets that don't repeat. Probably not. Olive. And this is Olive Brown. Raw Umber. Good old brown. Kind of a nice red. Nice red brown. Russet. Don't those all look, these all look really pretty all together. <laughs> I want it to cool down here so bad. It, it definitely has. I shouldn't complain, you know. We go from 100 and, it's probably 105 as an average for this summer. We had a cool summer this year. Um. But it's still getting up into the mid 80s right now, even though the mornings and the evenings are gorgeous. I sleep with all my windows open. That is a beautiful, beautiful orange. I really, really like that. Okay, and then this last one is ochre. Well, it's not the last one. It's the last one I'm gonna put on this row and you're gonna, you know, you might laugh at me when I tell you why, but that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's actually prettier, I think, on the paper than it looked like it was going to be. Okay, so I, I, I'm putting these on the next row because when I look at these grays. Look how blue that looks. I mean, that is really, really blue. All three of these grays look really blue to me. And I didn't want to put the blues on the same row as all of these warm colors. I know, goofy. Did I just do that? Did I just do that? So you can see, I think, that they still remain um, you know, soft, hence the name soft oil pastel. <laughs> All right, so this is light gray, which to me is like, pff, that's blue. That's, <laughs> that's, 
That's not gray, that's blue. This is gray. See, that's more like gray. I can, I, I get that, I can live with that. And this is dark gray, which also looks gray. All right, so we have light gray, which looks very kind of translucent because as I kind of loop this color around, I felt like you could see the paper underneath. But the more that I blend it, the, the, the better it looked, so. Okay, this is gray. And I will tell you right now that I'm pretty sure that these are the three colors that we're going to use for the background on the dog. Because I really like the way the original photo looks. I like the color combo very much. So I think those were gonna be what we're gonna use for him. All right, we are almost down to the end. We've got our black. Very opaque, very nice. Think how easy it would be oh, to, use, to do a black in a background. Okay, and then um, white. And just out of curiosity, I think I'll swatch one of the Paul Rubin white ones as well, just to test opacity. Like you can see as I go to start to blend this, how you can kind of see the the paper swirling underneath. Okay, so that's that one. And then if we pull out one of these, if I I can get it out. Pull out one of these Paul Rubens. And I kind of feel the same. Um, these actually almost feel wetter. They almost feel like they're moving for a lot longer. The color's pretty close. All right, so the next test is going to be <laughs> really curious about this is to see if my uh, wet wipes will clear clean off my fingers so let's see well that's doing a pretty good job I would have to, I'm gonna have to say so now that makes me wonder if I were to use a um, brush, like a, um, you know, one of my brushes, one of my short bristle stencil brushes. If I were to use that, would it cl come clean with soap and water? I don't know. 
I'm really, um, well, you know what? I'm going to try it because I have, um, I'll try it on one of my ones that I'm, I'll try it on that one. Um, because I have mineral spirits, I can always clean it if it doesn't come clean. Also be curious to see if I can get it off of the um, oh, palette. All right, I'll take my little test, my little pieces of test paper there. All right, what color should we use? Something yummy. Let's do this. This is periwinkle blue. Put that down, oh, put that down on the palette. It went on the brush okay. It's not really pulling off of the palette. It does go on okay. Yes, this is a one of my crappy brushes where the bristles are coming out. So I might just throw it away if it doesn't wash out. Um, but I'm, I've am i got to say that I think I truly would prefer going straight on the paper and just blending with the Q-tip. It doesn't take any more work to get it to blend and the color is um, a little deeper in doing it that way. So, and I also think, I mean, one of the things I like about these is how you can kind of make the color fade away. But to be honest, that's not the purpose that I have. That's not why I bought these. I bought these to, um, I bought these to cover the entire piece of paper. So I don't think that's an issue, but just curious if you could, if you wanted to. So your blend probably isn't going to be as nice. Um, it doesn't get as soft. It's harder to get soft. So this, the brush definitely um, blends out the edge a lot better than a Q-tip. If that's the look that you um, that you're going to go for. So I'm really happy that they clean up um, off my fingers um, with the um, wet wipe. So I think what I will do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to throw some color down on a, just a, a junk piece of, you know, just maybe even on this, I don't know. Throw some color down, um, spray it, and I will come back and let you know if the color um, kind of seals in or not, and I'll also let you know if um, if that washes out with soap and water or if I need mineral spirits. So I will do that, and um, I will be back um, very shortly. Okay, I am back. I have some really good news. All right, so first, the... Um, the color washed off of both my um, palette and my brush um, with soap and water. And I even used cold water and it washed off just fine. So that was very, very exciting for me and good to know. The next exciting thing is I went ahead and I sprayed um, this um, with 
Krylon Matte Finish. Non-yellowing, eliminates glossy sheen, blah, blah, blah. I use this stuff all the time. So this is what I had and I gave it a shot. So I just kind of sprayed, you know, like one coat, but kind of passed over it a few times and let it dry for only about 10 minutes. And um, I can tell you that nothing is coming off. It's sealed. It's a done deal. This is so exciting. So um, you could use you could use these in your coloring books. Um, if you spray with the matte finish, you can use this on um, your art, um, on any um, paper that you choose. My next thing I'm going to try it on is my drafting film. Um, I think it could be really, really awesome on drafting film. And um, I like the idea of being able to do it on the front and just to go ahead and spray the whole thing on front. Um, you could use it on the back too, but you'd get a much more muted kind of, you know, faded out look if you put it on the back of drafting film. So there we are. <laughs> um, I am super duper duper excited about these. Um, I'm going to take this page out. I'm going to spray it because it has it hasn't been sprayed. And this one which has been sprayed, it even feels different. I mean it feels completely dry and um, doesn't come off. So I'm going to spray this one. I'm going to put that in my swatch chart. Mungo Artist Soft Oil Pastels, the gallery. Um, the gallery one. Love them. So next thing is for me to do a, um, a light fats test. And after that, I'm off and running. Um, in the meantime, I'll probably still use them for artwork for myself. Um, and uh, that is it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, if you are interested in um, checking these out. I will have a link um, to the ones that I purchased um, through Amazon down there in the description box below. So you can look at those. And uh, that is all. I can't wait to get started using these. All right, my friends, until I see you next time, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Love you. Bye.